and welcome back to my Dallas Cowboys blog. It's the evening before Dallas heads to, or should I say Dallas is already headed to Green Bay, and it's the evening before their game, before their playoff matchup. The Dallas Cowboys have a remarkable rookie starting along their offensive line. An all-pro, Zach Martin, has elevated Dallas' rushing attack and pass protection. Green Bay has a rookie starting along their offensive line as well, and he's playing well too. But he's not an all-pro. A fifth-round pick, the rookie center for Green Bay, struggles to anchor in the pass rush and can be beat with speed. Still, he's helped field the best offensive line Aaron Rodgers has ever had, if you take some of their critics at face value. Yet, Green Bay's line is rampant with flaws. The Packers' second-year left tackle, a fourth-round pick, lacks upper body power, is susceptible to second moves, and lacks elite lateral speed. When the Packers' offense functions according to plan, these players are banded over by quarterback Aaron Rodgers' running and quick throws. Dallas invested a first-round pick into their left tackle. They also invested a first-round pick into their center, where Green Bay invested a fifth. Dallas has paid a steep price to field a superior ground game, and they will be rewarded for it. One does not build a ground game overnight in two drafts with in second-day draft picks. Dallas has been been preparing for this square off of talent ever since they drafted Tyron Smith. They drafted him to win playoff games. They drafted Travis Fedrick and Zach Martin for that reason too, all in the first round. Green Bay was just auditioning their guys when they drafted left tackle David Bacartier. <laughs> David Bacteri. When they drafted left tackle David Bacteri, they didn't know if he'd work out. Now it's in his second year. If they thought he was going to be a sure thing at left tackle, they wouldn't have drafted him in the fifth round. Uh, the same is true for their center, Josh Sitton. It's commendable that Green Bay had a plan and found serviceable guys while actively retooling. But teams don't rush the ball because of invention. They build towards it, as Dallas has done. Dallas dug their own trenches on offense. On defense, Dallas has players who fulfill their role, though they lack game-breaking players who may, might redefine their position. Dallas has a platoon of players for every scenario. Green Bay has specialized players who need a lead to remain relevant. Players such as Green Bay defensive end Mike Daniels can be mitigated by running at them. He's way undersized as a six-foot-tall five-tech, whatever you read about his weight. He's a second-year player who came into the NFL last year weighing 285 pounds, and Green Bay expects readers to believe he's an honest 315 pounds now in his second year. He's quick, but his quickness can be bore down by rushing. Leading pass rusher Casey Matthews will be matched up on Dallas' left tackle Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith can black block Matthews forever. Waiting for a Matthews win would be like waiting for gold to decay. These are the two most left players on the defensive front seven for the Packers. On the right side of the offensive line for Dallas as it mat is the real question, and how they match up with legendary defensive end Julius Peppers will be the most compelling plot. Yet Roma has usually managed outside pressure well, and Parnell plays well when he commits to the play. So if he doesn't have a mental foul up to start the play, he's going to be able to execute it most of the time. The Packers are not loaded with talent on their defensive front seven, so their coaching staff will be looking to play call a victory. Dallas is susceptible to blitzes, yet the fire zone blitzes of Green Bay are old news. Look for right tackle Jeremy Parnell to improve against the blitz just as the rest of the offensive line has done. This game will come down to individual players winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. Jeremy Parnell can block Julius Peppers, and that is the biggest question heading into this game for Dallas. The biggest question for Green Bay is their quarterback's health. Tony Romo's health is no sure thing either, but the Cowboys paid a steeper price to protect Romo, and their confidence in the offensive line is well-founded. Green Bay's worst defense is their base defense. Their base 3-4 has multiple linebackers who struggle to take on blocks. Not only can they be run on, they cannot cover. For this reason, Dallas will likely field the 12 formation often. That is one back, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. From here, expect big completions to a tight end like Gavin Escobar, above and beyond the normal completions to Jason Witten. Green Bay's nose tackle, Latroy Guillen, is a tall and thin player for his position. Sounds weird for a 6'4", 315-pound nose tackle, but he is unorthodox. He's lighter than the 340-pound guys who are normal at the position. He's also much taller than the quick twitch guys like Jay Ratliff who played the position at a similar weight. Green Bay's defense is littered with fish out of water players like this. Their Ted, that is the pork shot middle linebacker in the 3-4, is a second year player 
and former seventh round pick Sam Barrington. He's like Dallas's Devontae Holloman if Dallas had, Haunte, had Holloman available this year. A former seventh round pick Dallas fans did not want to see start. He's shorter and lighter than Anthony Hitchens, a player considered small by Dallas fans when he was drafted. And he's not A.J. Hawk, an older player for Green Bay who's still starting and had become a target. Smaller and lighter is a dominant theme throughout Green Bay's defense. The only way they can be effective is when they use their speed to their advantage. Dallas can disrupt that through the power Dallas's brain trust has been investing in for years. I wanted to write a colorful metaphor about Dallas working and digging to lay the foundation for a strong run game while Green Bay just threw out their construction with no foundation beforehand. Another metaphor is that Dallas spent years beforehand digging their trenches heading into battle while Green Bay fields their squad with no such preparation. Another metaphor was how Dallas likes their situation along their offensive and defensive lines heading into this game. Dig it? Expect an epic defensive battle where the only stat that makes sense is Dallas will have around 50 yards rushing at half and 150 at the end of the game. Passing will come at a premium. A DeMarco Murray run in the second half will be enough to break this game open. Despite the passing offenses in this game, scoring will be hard to come by, and I expect a 14-6 Dallas win in a story completely written by both teams' rushing attack. I don't think Green Bay can run. I think Aaron Rodgers is a sitting duck. I think the Cowboys' pass rush is heating up at the right time. Their offensive line will be overmatched, and the Cowboys' running will keep them off the field and not allow them to ever have an opportunity to come back. Um, so, I expect for Dallas to move on. I don't know that Seattle's actually going to beat Carolina. Um, that may have already happened for all that I know as I record this. Um, but I think whoever, you know, whoever Dallas uh, ends up matching up with after Green Bay, it's, there's been a lot of cards falling in Dallas's favor recently. And I think the biggest thing working for the Cowboys is their lack of weaknesses. They don't have any overt players you want to target um, on defense. So there's no, uh, there are better and worse players on Dallas's defense, but their worst player that's on the field is not blowing it for the rest of the guys. In years past, Dallas would have complete breakdowns um, that would undermine their whole defense. Uh, this year, they don't have that. They're having at least average play across the board, and that, that allows like a few guys to make big plays here and there. And then combined with Dallas' time of possession and advantage in running the ball, that will uh, take over this game and defeat Green Bay. All right, well, this is uh, my blog. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you later.